6.01 p.m. on Monday, December 5th. I'm gonna to call to order this meeting of the Winooski Liquor Control Board. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councillor Oakley. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, welcome. Jenny, uh, for regular items, we have on for discussion approval, home test food market, second class liquor license, and tobacco license and tobacco enforcement. Yes, thank you. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, counselors know that um, clerk's offices are now obligated or required, I should say, to issue tobacco licenses and tobacco endorsements. So in tobacco endorsements are vape products. Um, it used to be part of uh, clerks four or five years ago we used to issue tobacco licenses and then the state took it back but now those are coming forward um, so home test market food market is a new business um, at 325 Main Street suite 4 and um, they are looking to get started as soon as possible so we're just looking for approval um, for their second class liquor license tobacco license and tobacco endorsement um, and they are here. Would you like to come up and introduce yourselves? Yes. Welcome. Um, yeah, if you want to just share your name and then tell us a little bit about the business. Uh, my name is Z Eric and Sabimana. I'm the immigrant from Africa. I've been here in America for 17 years. And then when I come in America, I come as a refugee and then start working. It was a new challenge, new life. And then I tried to go to school to UVM and then I graduate. And then after I was keeping working as paycheck by paycheck, and, uh, having a check every day. And then one day I just think like, why do I need to be an employee instead of being an employer? And uh, we believe in America is a country of opportunity and then it's our home. So and then I started thinking like I can think something different and they just bring an idea to not doing like everything, uh, the same things everybody doing because a lot of our immigrants they just do the business but it's African market, African food. You know, so let me think something different like we can share with our American people. Like I can come up with another idea of test food market so that I can just do the business which even if American, the native from America, they can even if come to share our business, not only for immigrants. And then I talk with my partner, she's the owner, I'm the runner. And then I would talk and then I would discuss and we say, let's just go slow and we just ask the information how those things go. And then that's why we come to Madam right there. And then she gave us an idea. And then we started applying the, the, the iron number and then we go to the Secretary of State and apply for the certificate, stuff like that. But it was a long procedure. We don't have a lot of connection. We don't know a lot of things about it. But we just want to try so that we can be an employee, self for being employed. That's why we come up with an idea of home test for the market, which if you can have a connection and if you can have a, a more resource, we can do more than that. Uh, instead of home test for the market, we can do more according to that name. But we try to start with the liquor and the beer and the and the sip and the tobacco endorsement. But in the future, we think that if we become bigger with our connection, we can do more than that. We can just start selling even if food and open even if bars, so that the immigrant can feel welcome in America as a business owner. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you for sharing about that. Uh, and would you like to introduce yourself? Um, I just say my name because he already did everything. <laughs> okay, that's true. He <laughs> doesn't say everything. Um, my name is Hadija Uze. I am an immigrant from Africa. I have been here for five years. Oh, sorry, seven years. So, my idea since I came here was business, but it's a lot of process. I have it to just wait until I get the pointer right now. I am on point with my partner Eric. We just sit together and come up with the idea. Right now, we try our best. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming in. Um, are there any questions from council? All right. Any questions from members of the public? Remember, you can use the chat or raise hand feature. 
Okay. Well, hearing no concerns about the, the license, would anyone like to make a motion to approve both regular items? So moved. Second. Motion by Thomas, second by Bryn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. You are approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then Jenny can follow up with you to help. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So that's the end of the liquor control agenda. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Bryn, second by Thomas. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very All right, much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I've got 6.07 p.m. I'm gonna call to order the Winooski City Council meeting. First up is agenda review. Any comments, concerns about the order of the agenda tonight? No. Okay, uh, next up is public comment. So public comment is meant for, excuse me, um, comment on any items not on tonight's agenda. If you are here for something um, that's included on the agenda, um, like the budget, for example, um, if you can please wait until we reach that item, we'll have time for public comment in each of the agenda items. Uh, if there is public comment about something not on tonight's agenda, um, please go ahead and use the raise hand or chat feature to let us know. Okay. On our consent agenda tonight, we have our minutes from November 7th and 28th. Were we all here for? All of those? I think so. Okay. Um, the accounts payable warrants for 11, 16, 18, and 12, 10. Payroll warrants for 10, 30 to 11, 12, and 11, 13 to 11, 26. Any comment or concern on the consent agenda? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Thomas, second by Aurora. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. <coughs> so, council reports. Can I start with you, Aurora? Sure. So don't have anything super specific to report beyond that our next inclusion and belonging commission meeting is going to be on the 8th and it is going to be virtual. So anyone who wishes to attend, please do. Um, and that's gonna be at the eight, on the 8th at 6 p.m. So I'll have our next Safe Healthy Connected People meeting and that is going to be on the 13th at 6.30. So. Please feel free to join uh, either of those meetings if you want to come in and participate. Thank you. Um, and since we last met in early November, um, the Municipal Infrastructure Commission uh, had a meeting on the 17th, November 17th. Uh, it was a joint meeting with the Finance Commission. Uh, we continued to review. Uh, we had a joint meeting with them in October. Um, and in November, we continue to talk about capital assets um, uh, that the city has and owns, um, looking at uh, potential uses for ARPA funds, such as um, parks and recreational um, opportunities, safety improvements, um, especially pedestrian and um, biking safety um, improvements that could be made. Um, uh, opportunities, we also reviewed opportunities to improve city communications so that uh, residents had a better idea of um, capital improvements that were coming up and that were planned, as well as opportunities to engage. Um, there wasn't anything specific that came out of that. I think continued um, efforts and posting through many channels is kind of a um, continued to continue continuation of that, but also you know being adaptable to other opportunities. Um, and we are having uh, another meeting, um, basically a work plan review um, with the group um, in two weeks, and that'll be a uh, plan for, to be held at the, um, in the community room at the pool. So if anyone wants to attend, we'll um, be meeting in person. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Planning Commission had another meeting since our last council meeting. Uh, they continue to discuss revisions to parking requirements, including potential small reductions to incentivize affordable housing, electric vehicle parking, um, and underground parking that increases open space. There's another meeting this Thursday, 6.30. Uh, they're held hybrid, so here, you can attend by coming here or Zoom and phone. Um, and there was also some discussion amongst the members about a desire to bring back a design review committee to his support historic preservation. So for context, we used to have 
that kind of committee um, is kind of nullified when downtown zoning and form based code set standards for design, though. Um, <coughs> I attended the town meeting TV board of trustees again. We might have an applicant for that, but um, just did a review of financials for that meeting and um, was also able, you were able to join me. Thomas had a listening center, a, a listening session at the senior center for ARPA. We're still conducting those. Um, there's some outreach happening through the schools to get youth input as well. And I think our survey is still active on the website. Paul? It sure is. Great. You can also always email or call any of us um, with comments about that. I'll pass it to Jim. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll start off with um, piling on for Thursday the 8th with a 6 p.m. Housing Commission meeting uh, to be held there to kind of continue our work on the public building registry, which really affects a lot of our housing quality for um, enforcement and uh, promotion work here in the city through the rental registry. So I encourage people to join there. Um, this will be our uh, last meeting of the year and we'll be meeting again in January. Um, the uh, Howard Winooski Foundation Board met and approved the first round of funding for uh, improving uh, the teacher pipeline um, and awarding funding to a current Winooski School District member that uh, can use it to upgrade their credentials or training in order to uh, develop a pathway into a profession within the school district. So excited to see that first award come out. That was a monumental uh, or a momentous moment for the uh, part of Winooski Foundation. So I'm really proud of that group for getting there. And we held a um, listening session, engagement session with the Winooski Housing Authority Courtyard Building um, since we last met and had a nice conversation with a handful of folks there, both about ARPA uh, spending priorities as well as larger uh, questions and uh, updates on what's happening in the city. So it's nice to be back in that building um, with residents again. And we're looking forward to continuing to rotate through that building, uh, every couple of those buildings every couple of months. So um, those are my reports for today. Thank you. Thomas? Um, nothing from the downtown Winooski board. I uh, just want to echo what you said about the ARPA listening session. It was well attended at the senior center. And then I will be attending another one at St. Francis School on Wednesday. Um, so looking forward to hearing from some students on their perspective. Awesome. Thanks. How'd the pop-up go? Huh? How'd the pop-up go? The pop-up was really great. It was fun. I got there a little late. <laughs> um, City updates. Yes, city updates for December 5th. On behalf of our community and our fire department, we want to thank the fire and rescue departments of St. Michael's College, Vermont Air National Guard, Burlington, South Burlington, Colchester, Essex, and Wilson for supporting our response to the structure fire at 72 East Allen Street. Although the structure was a total loss and several people are now displaced, the efforts of about 70 firefighters and rescue personnel on site ensured their safety and that of the neighboring buildings, uh, that neighboring, neighboring buildings were not damaged. I also want to thank our own fire department and leadership for their tireless and effective work this weekend. John Adi, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah. Thanks, I, I think it's important to um, recognize other city departments. Um, you know, Winooski PD um, officers and dispatch, um, public works department, um, Vermont Red Cross, um, Green Mountain Power, Vermont Gas. Um, you know, as you said, it, the, this fire has displaced 10 to 12 people um, for a long term, if not permanently. Um, and right now, the fire, we know where the origin of the fire was, where it started in the basement. Um, the cause is undetermined, and anyone. Um, that has any information is asked to call the Winooski PD at 655-0221 or the Vermont Arson line at 1-800-32-ARSON. Um, you know, again, any information that we can obtain um, through the joint investigation with Vermont State Police, Winooski PD, and Winooski Fire would be extremely helpful at this point. Um, the next steps are we are trying to determine if the building is structurally safe to remain. Um, and 
we have some challenges um, with some communication with the building, the property owner that we're trying to work through. So in the coming days, that's kind of where we're, you know, where our focus is and, and really trying to help the displaced um, residents at this point. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Uh, continuing on, speaking of emergency services, the Winooski Fire and Police Departments have par partnered with Operation Fire Cuffs and the University of Vermont Children's Hospital, I just realized, I don't know, that's fine, uh, Children's Hospital for their annual holiday toy drive. Donations can be delivered at the following locations, Winooski Fire Department at 120 Main, uh, you can use the back parking lot door, Winooski City Hall at 27 West Allen Street, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., entrance is on Weaver Street, and the Winooski Police Department at, also at 27 West Allen Street, uh, to enter at the lobby, it would be on West Allen Street, 24-7. To see the list of recommended donation items and for more information, please visit the news updates section of WinooskiVT.gov. As you know, tonight officially marks the start of fiscal year 2024 budget season. Community members are encouraged to get engaged in the process and we are glad to see uh, the many folks joining tonight on Zoom. To see the full budget and meeting schedule, please visit winooskivt.gov FY24. If you have questions or comments, please contact us uh, by phone at 802-655-6410 or by email at budget at winooskivt.gov or you can get in touch with me directly or any of your counselors directly. Winooski Recreation Parks are excited to announce their slate of 2022 to 23 winter programs, which include youth basketball, adult yoga, a special February break camp for grades K through five, winter themed outdoor activities, Friday afternoon outings, and more. Visit winooskivt.gov slash rec programs to sign up today. As we head into the holiday months, the city of Winooski encourages our residents and visitors to do everything you can to prevent the spread of COVID-19. More COVID-19 illness is to be expected as people are spending more time gathering indoors and over the holidays. For information on vaccines, testing, masks, and other resources, visit winooskivt.gov slash COVID-19. Free take-home kit test kits are available while supplies last during the open hours of Winooski City Hall the Winooski Memorial Library, and the Winooski Senior Center. And finally, the winter parking ban reminder. Overnight street parking is prohibited in downtown Winooski from 2.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. from December 1st to March 31st. For the rest of the city, winter parking bans are made on a case-by-case, weather-dependent basis, or for area-specific snow removal, where overnight street parking is prohibited from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. To receive up-to-date winter parking ban alerts, you can sign up for Nixle by texting Winooski to 888-777. For full details about winter parking bans in Winooski, please visit winooskivt.gov slash parking. That's it, finally. All right, thank you. So we'll move into our regular items. First up is on for discussion approval, assessor's office errors and omissions. Yes, so in your packets, the assessor did uh, provide two new errors and omissions uh, that were left off the grand list that were not, or that were incorrect on the grand list. One is due to an inactive account and the other is due to personal property no longer located in the city. The two adjustments remove a total of $146,959 from the grand list, resulting in a revenue decrease of just over $2,000. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions from council? Any questions from members of the public? I'm checking the Zoom real quick. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions or concerns, do I have a motion to approve the assessor's office errors and omissions? So moved. Second. Motion by Aurora, second by Thomas. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. All right, item B. So this is the FY24 budget presentation. So we're gonna have um, our city manager, Elaine, run through the overview. Um, we'll have time for questions after that um, before we jump into the general government section. Okay, so this is gonna take me a minute. Let's see if I can share what I mean to share here. Well, while you pull that up, I will just share um, for process informations 
information. We go through six meetings, seven meetings for budget, eight actually. So tonight is the first introduction, general administration, and then we have four additional meetings where we dig into different departments. And then we have a final meeting um, to get any last information or discussion before we then actually vote on what goes to, to voters on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So the goal of tonight is not to do like complete decision making or you know, we're not expecting to get there, but to make sure we all understand what the different proposals are, um, get questions asked. Additionally, we all have these binders. It's, it's also in the, um, the packet too, like line item. You know, you are, I would encourage all of you to do some one-on-one -on -one time with staff. Um, you know, you are welcome to do that and have questions answered that way if you really wanna get in the weeds. You don't have to save everything for the meetings. Um, I know my first city budget, I, I sat down with the old manager and Angela and went through spreadsheets and asked inappropriately detailed questions, I would say, <laughs> um, just to make sure I felt like I understood what I was getting into. So there's a lot of time to, to dig into this and go through the process. This is just the first of several opportunities um, for us and for members of the public. I will pass it to Elaine. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, so tonight I'm presenting the city manager's fiscal year 2023 to 2024 proposed budget. I'll provide an overview of all the funds and go into some detail about the general administration departments. This being an unusual year for Newski between high inflation, having uh, ARPA grant funds, and the TIF district expiring in May of 2024, I will be presenting three budget scenarios before my recommended budget. We do have a lot to cover and much of it is interconnected, so I request that council limits themselves to clarification questions during the presentation. Please, of course, do take notes on your questions and either ask them at the end or during one-on-one -on -one or uh, at future departmental level meetings, uh, presentations during your, your meetings. For detailed questions related, again, to community services, police, fire, public works, and capital improvement. Specifically, um, they, will have, uh, they will have opportunities to discuss with you their departments. Am I still okay? Can people hear me okay? Jim? Sounds great, looks great, Elaine. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so during the presentation, I'll remind everyone about the strategic vision, review the budget process, present the budget scenarios, and proposed slash recommended budgets, review all funds, reserves, and leverage funds, and review what's next in the budget process. I'll also review the general government budget in detail. To not keep everyone in suspense, a level services budget would require a 14.53% tax rate increase, meaning we would be doing the same this year as we did last year. That would require that much of a tax rate increase. For context, usually it's more around 2%. There'll be more detail later in the presentation. Keeping the tax rate increased to 5%, and I'll, I'll explain later where that number came from, that would require cutting services and adding revenues. Uh, despite this, it's important for council to understand and the community what other commitments and goals would look like for taxes and what we have been calling the stretch budget. The budget I'm proposing and rec recommending, well, the budget I'm proposing would require 11.62% tax rate increase. To get this down to a 5% increase would require the use of $409,000 of fund balance, which is my ultimately my recommended budget. So this is a reminder that everything your city team has done and continues to do is guided by the strategic vision set by the community in 2015. These themes, themes continue to be relevant today, as has been evident to me coming to Winooski New about six months ago. In recent years, it has been rough seas for many. COVID has been difficult globally. Your city government staff was without a permanent manager for about a year and without an HR director, human resources director, for several months. Inflation is also at unprecedented high levels, as I'm sure all of you are experiencing in your own pocketbooks. 
I'll circle back to that in a minute. So if this timeline looks familiar, it should. It, you saw, or at least Council did, a very similar graphic in my predecessor's budget overview presentation in December of 2020. The main change I made to this really is updating, it used to say 2020 to 2021, now it says 2020 to 2023. I've included this as a reminder that through Stormy Seas, city leadership, staff, and council have persevered in carrying out the vision, plans, and commitments that the community has established, reinforced, and continues to value. In my six months, the priorities of housing, equity, access to local government, and impact on taxpayers have been clear. These are consistent with the focus on affordability and equity that the former city manager noted in her 2020 presentation and still are in this timeline. I encourage the community to recognize that their city government has continued to maintain course on their strategic vision under very challenging circumstances. And it does continue to be a privilege for me to have been welcome to join you all in serving the Winooski community. So a reminder on the budget process as the mayor just outlined, uh, the, the council has approved uh, the budget timeline. This is what it is, basically. You see it on the screen right now. Uh, the council discussed budget priorities in October. Tonight is in bold city manager's budget presentation and general government. The next three meetings are more, departmental, more department presentations. In January, there'll be an overall discussion of follow-up items. January 23rd is the date that council needs to approve uh, the vote and set the warning for town meeting day, uh, where the community will be voting on the budget. In February, the staff and council will uh, strive to present the budget to as many community members as possible. And then the, again, on March 7th, the public will vote on the budget, among other things. So back to the budget process on priorities. During that October meeting, while no votes were taken, council provided the following guidance. No explicit tax rate goal this year at staff request because it was an unusual year. Uh, that we could use American Rescue Plan Act, otherwise known as ARPA, or tax increment financing for bridging to a future year to reduce impact on taxpayers. To right size capacity to current programming. To catch up with the capital maintenance plan, and there was no consensus on areas to deprioritize, meaning that you, council was looking to staff to recommend what to deprioritize. And a note to back up to the current programming, um, council did not reach consensus on whether current programming included ESSER funded positions, that was COVID grant funds from the school district. We have included some we considered priorities, as you'll see later, but not all. The context for the budget is what services those budgets pay for and what it takes to deliver those services. For the most part, it takes people. So that's why we're showing you an organizational chart. The blue box, let's see if I can show my, oh, I can't. I was hoping it could show my pointer over here. Oh well. So in the blue boxes near the top or at the top are the governing authorities, which start with residents and voters. Everyone else in this organizational chart for our purposes is to serve, our ser purpose is to serve that public, meaning you that are joining on Zoom. The community's primary role is to set the vision and keep everyone else accountable to it, everybody else on this chart. Council's role is to adopt the plans, strategy, and policies to achieve that vision. Uh, the black box off to the right with the list of commissions there, those are advisory bodies. Their members are all appointed by city council to formally advise them on plans, strategy, and policies. Everyone in the green boxes, meaning me, the city manager and below, we are appointed staff. The city manager, that's me again, staffs city council and provides leadership, coordination, and support to all city departments. As city manager, I'm accountable for all activities of staff. Below the city manager box is where it gets more tangible. The words at the top of each green box shows the type of services municipalities are expected to deliver, and Winooski does deliver. Below that are the staff that deliver that service according to Winooski's priorities. So going from left to right, the contracted assessor makes sure we're evaluating property values consistently so that we're charging property taxes fairly. 
Fire and code enforcement protect our safety and health related to buildings and road hazards, for example. Code enforcement officer hours include enforcing city parking regulations, which is about safety in most of Winooski, and in the downtown supports our economic vitality by ensuring parking spaces for business customers turn over. Public Works manages our streets, sidewalks, water, and wastewater services. Police and dispatch support the safety of our community members. Community services support the vitality of our community by providing green spaces, safe spaces, learning spaces, and programs. Planning and zoning and housing support a built environment that our community needs and wants. And finally, administration makes all the other functions more effective, hopefully. Most of Winooski's government services are provided by people, again. So it's not like a manufacturing plant where maybe the machinery might be the highest cost. That's why so much of this pie chart of Winooski's budget costs is in salaries and benefits, which is in yellow. Now we'll go into the budget scenarios for the general fund. The general fund pays for general administration, fire and code, police, public works administration and staff, community services, the O'Brien Community Center, and some capital costs related to the buildings for those people. As I previewed budgeting in FY24 for the actual cost of providing the same services provided in FY23, the current one that we're in, would result in a property tax increase of 14.53%, which would cost the owner of a property valued at $225,000, as an example, an additional $388.88 annually in property taxes. Most of this 14.53% increase for FY24 is due to economy-wide cost increases outside of our control. In particular, recall the yellow slices of the pie chart. Those are related to salaries and benefits. We assumed a 6.5% cost of living adjustment in fiscal year 24 for non-union staff and a 7.7% cost of living adjustment for union members. Our employee bargaining unit contracts include an annual wage increase based on either the October to October or February to February consumer price indices. In September, the February 2023 projections were between 4.43% and 8.36%. The current consumer price index issued for the period October 2021 to October 2022 is 7.7%. Unfortunately, a budget must be adopted by the council by the end of January to be advertised for town meeting in March, and so we will not know the February to February consumer price index amount until after the budget is adopted or at least voted on the first time. Health insurance. The city receives health insurance through Vermont Health Connect. Initial health insurance quotes for calendar year 2023 show an increase of 10.5% for Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield premiums, which it make up 75% of the city's health care costs. We project a 13% increase for calendar year 2023 based on experience. And finally, the grand list assumption, we project a modest increase of 0.8% growth in the grand list based on zoning and building permits issued, offset by expected value reductions. The net increase translates to approximately $71,275 in new property tax revenue for the general fund. While we continue to see new development throughout the city, grand list growth that will determine the actual tax base for the city won't be calculated until April 1st, 2023, and so could vary from projections. Last fiscal year, the total grand list growth was 1.39%. Like the budget itself, most of the cost increase of the tax rate is driven by staff cost increases in wages and benefits. Again, this is because most of Winooski's government services are provided by people. Now, a reasonable person will look at this big yellow part of the pie and ask whether we can reduce these costs by paying people less or by providing fewer benefits. There are three challenges to that approach. First, wages and benefits set by union contracts are legally binding. Second, non-union wages and benefits could be changed and has been trimmed in the past by councils. However, this contributes to pay compression, where those with leadership responsibilities and stresses are paid similarly 
to their frontline staff. We actually did model a few scenarios because this is certainly an ugly budget, as is, but it didn't take much cutting before some supervisors would be paid less than their staff after staff overtime was included. This would make it hard to find or keep people willing to shoulder the burden of leadership. Third, because we have so many more union staff, cutting non-union wages would not move the tax rate significantly. So as we look next at what costs are included in level services and then what costs to cut, please keep in mind the rest of this pie chart. What would make a significant difference? Everything that isn't brown, that all other slice in the, in the pie chart, is more or less out of our control. So in addition to salaries and benefits, Winooski has limited ability to negotiate the cost of regional services, utilities, and professional services. So for example, most of regional services, would con which contributes just 1% of the tax rate increase, is Green Mountain Transit. And during this process with the Winooski City, Winooski can't affect their budget request. So I will review the larger budget increases that were for level services, but still reflect a change of some kind. Some of the level services budget tax rate increase is due to including what should have been in the budget and the city does pay for, but in a way that isn't reflected in the tax rate. I'll explain what I mean when we get to those items. Historically, the rental, registry, and public building fees collected have been maintained and operated as a special fund that is not part of the general fund. Any budget shortfall is then paid for by a general fund reserve balance transfer. This has two consequences. First, the true cost of the program is not obvious. Second, staff feel pressure to generate enough in fees to 100% cover the rental registry and public building programs expenses. This has begun to lead to quantity versus quality of annual inspections, whereas uh, we are ensuring quality housing through this mechanism primarily now. But many factors each year affect the ability to staff to meet revenue targets. And many of those factors are out of their control. Whereas the rental registry services are essential to the health and safety of renters and users of public buildings and have contributed to reducing our structure fire calls. Including this budget in the general fund reflects that criticality of these services. Winooski Fire's part-time on-call staff response rates have declined in recent years, and we are having trouble recruiting new staff that live within a workable response time dis uh, distance. Although our structure fire calls have decreased this weekend notwithstanding, we still need sufficient readiness for our current building stock and continuing growth. St. Mike's Fire has historically provided limited automatic aid to Winooski on certain fire responses. We've asked St. Mike's Fire to respond side by side with Winooski resources 24 seven to assure appropriate resources are available for emergency calls. This will also allow us to better meet national response guidelines and best practices and better ensure staff safety and the level of service across our diverse response area that it needs. This does come at a cost which is included in the level of services budget. St. Mike's Rescue provides Winooski with advanced life support with ambulance transport services at no cost to the city budget. None of our budget scenarios include any changes to that arrangement. Recent actual legal services costs, which are unpredictable, have been higher, especially in the last two to four years. The level services budget includes an amount based on the two-year higher average. When we have more legal expenses than budgeted, it comes out of fund balance. Each year, the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission supplements our work under their Unified Planning Work Grant Program. This program requires local match. We haven't budgeted for that match in the past, again in an effort to keep the tax rate low, and then have used fund balance to pay the match when the time comes. Level Services budget includes the match. Of all the complaints I've heard about, line striping is among the most common so far. Again, staff has typically budgeted for it, then cut it to meet tax rate goals, and then submitted a fund balance request to pay for it. This, de this delays our ability to secure contractors because we might delay going out to bid until we know what the fund balance is. So level services includes an increase for line striping, which if it isn't clear to those of you who aren't used to looking at it, is a, a safety measure. 
We often have to cut down street trees in poor health. We need to replace these, but have typically not budgeted enough for replacement trees. The level services budget increases what we have been replacing, but using fund balance to meet grant, grant match requirements to pay for. The recommended capital improvement plan includes the annual 5% increase to funding for infrastructure that, um, that has been voted in, in the past. Included in this plan is all existing debt service, including for the Myers Memorial Pool and phase one of the Main Street Revitalization Project, re scheduled fleet replacement, and some street resurfacing. This amount is still insufficient to keep up with maintaining roads and sidewalks, let alone begin implementing improvements identified in planning documents. But we've interpreted level services in the ca this case to mean the 5% annual increase which has been historically approved by a community vote. A majority of the senior center programming funds were formally tracked in a separate fund. Without bingo, that budget is no longer covering its expenses because that was a revenue generator. So we are proposing to bring the senior center programming budget fully into the general fund. Note that that adds a net of $11,540 to the general fund. That is $20,320 of expenses and $8,780 in revenues. The last bullet on this slide is staff required to maintain level community services, including some items currently paid for with the ESSER grant, the school grant of COVID area, COVID era school grant. Council members did not agree whether ESSER funded programming would be considered level services, so we have included all of them in the level services budget as what is recommended by staff. We have put some thought into which are providing more value at this time because 14.53% increase is too much. Uh, you'll see these in the cut recommendations. Staff included in ESSER funding are the community services administrative assistant, the second library circulation assistant, recreation programs assistant, and a portion of the youth interventionist. Altogether, all, these, all the items on this slide represent about 5.66% of the tax rate increase. Level services also includes fees to regional partners. And keep in mind, the share of the tax rate increase due to regional partners is only 1%. Compared to the amount budgeted in FY23, the Green Mountain Transit or bus service assessment is going up by $9,229.70 or 4.22%. The actual assessment decreased compared to the amount being paid in FY23, but as some who were present on council for the last budget cycle may recall, the actual assessment being more than budgeted was noted as an item of concern during the last budget process. The level services budget for regional partners includes the planned $1,000 increase to the Winooski Valley Parks District. This would bring the total allocation to $9,000. Note the Winooski Valley Parks District fee, full fee to Winooski is $12,045. And finally for level services budget, the last item to note is the planned $1,000 increase to town meeting TV. This would bring our total allocation to $10,000. The full town meeting TV fee to the city is $17,000. So back to the big picture of the general fund. A level services budget would be $9,639,850, wait a minute, $9,639,856.27. That budget is up 10.61% from fiscal year 23. And again, the property tax rate increase on a level services budget would be 14.53%. Because the revenue from grants and other non-property tax revenues will go down a bit by 1.84%, the reliance on property taxes from a level services budget would increase to 75.55% in FY24. This is illustrated in the pie chart on the left. It shows how the level services budget is paid for. The green is property taxes, so just over three quarters of the budget relies on property taxes. A reasonable person, again, here would ask if we can increase the share from other sources. We do pursue grants. You'll see a slide on that later in the presentation. But one, we don't show in the budget grants we haven't been awarded yet, and two, 
Remember how much of the cost is in staffing, and it's not ideal to hire people for core services with grant money, because once the grant goes away, there's a risk the services will also go away, since it, there's no guarantee we uh, will be able to secure another grant. The pie chart on the right shows what those revenues pay for in the general fund. General administration, fire and code, police, public works, community services, and the O'Brien Community Center, and again, the general fund's share of capital costs. And all these slides are on the website, so if I'm going a bit too fast, you're welcome to sh view them there. Paul, actually, if you wanna drop the link in the chat, that would be great. So that's what I have to say for now about the level services budget scenario. Next, I'll review the 5% tax rate increase budget scenario. So how we got to the 5% number, the Winooski Finance and Municipal Infrastructure Commissions indicated a tax rate increase of 5%, which is lower than inflation, thanks Paul, but higher than Winooski's historical increases would be tolerable. To meet this request, staff recommend specific cuts to some existing services, specific new revenues, and use of fund balance. We'll go over each of those now. To reduce the tax rate increase to 5%, staff recommended staffing cuts. Again, that's the biggest part of the budget, so it would have the biggest impact, unfortunately. Uh, those staffing cuts recommended include the equity director. This position is currently vacant. Staff continues to implement recommendations from the previous equity director and to integrate equity inter considerations into the operations and personnel considerations of each department and more can be done. And I will say, any of you on the call now or on the Zoom call now or watch this later or hear about this presentation, I do wanna be held accountable to those, uh, those outcomes. Not filling this position means the city will forego having in-house expertise and proactive planning for another year. Some learning opportunities are available through the city's current involvement with the State Office of Racial Equity's Ideal Program. The Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission has hired an equity coordinator who may be able to provide some research support. If, if the equity director position funds are indeed eliminated, the goal would be to restore funding for the position in fiscal year 25. The Youth Interventionist. This position is currently funded at 28 hours, 16 of which is from a COVID grant from the school. That's the ESSER funds that I've been referring to. 28 hours can support a caseload of four to five individuals. Without ESSER funding, this position would be down to 10 to 12 hours a week, which is not quite enough to support a caseload of two individuals. This position has had some very positive outcomes with individuals referred due to problem behaviors at school, becoming happier, engaged members of the community with the coaching of the youth interventionist who understands their Winooski context. Unfortunately, given the choice between hours serving one to two people at a time and other hours supporting many more, staff reluctantly propose eliminating the, li the limited youth interventionist hours. If those 12 hours were eliminated, the goal again would be to bring back a 28 hour position. Reducing the housing director weekly hours from 48 to 30. I paused filling this new position pending this budget discussion. The impact of this of course would be that the work plan would need to be scaled down. Since the position is currently not filled, the work plan hasn't been created yet. One AmeriCorps down from two, employers across the America program, not just Winooski, have had trouble finding people interested in serving AmeriCorps positions, likely, likely because of the low pay rate. Going down to one AmeriCorps reduces programming capacity by 20%, so clearly there is a service impact eliminating that position. Other cuts recommended by staff are match for Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission Unified Planning Work Program work. The FY23 projects are not yet started, so it's possible <coughs> the CCRPC won't need into fiscal year 24 to complete the fiscal year 23 projects, and we'll have limited capacity for any new FY24 work. That grant program is currently open and staff have not 
applied for anything yet because of this plan, or rather this proposal. So not as painful as some of the other cuts. This one is similar. So reducing the legal expense budget would reduce the budget for legal costs to match the struggle average for this expense over the last four years of $62,000, which is still an increase to the current budget. Um, just as a reminder, if this is confusing, the level services budget used the two-year average that was closer to $74,000. Keeping the rental registry program separate from the general fund, this would continue the operations of this program as it exists today. Currently, though, this program doesn't cover costs and the shortfall will need to be covered from existing revenues. Uh, we do have a healthy reserve at moment, so it would not be noticeable in the tax rate. Again, less painful for this year. Not something we're recommending to continue indefinitely, but again, compared to the other cuts, this one is less painful. Community service supply budgets. These are proposed cuts to the level services budgeted recreation supplies and library books and periodicals for the year. The cut proposal is to budget the same amount as this year, which with inflation does actually represent a cut. Either staff would make do with the existing resources or would seek alternative funding options to acquire needed items. The new revenue recommended by staff are development plans review. The city is already involved in reviewing development plans as part of its community risk reduction or building inspection services, but without charging fees. The state currently earns plans review revenue, but their staff have more work than they can handle timely. Note the state would have to agree to transfer this role to the city and there's no guarantee that that will happen. But that is a new revenue source that uh, staff are interested in. Resident parking permit fees. This is very minuscule, but it is revenue. We're, we're trying to turn over every stone. Currently, the city issues approximately 100 resident parking permits free of charge to those who pro show proof of residence within a resident-only parking zone. Staff recommend adding a small fee for these permits to offset some of the costs to administer that program. And finally, fund balance. The above cuts and new revenues recommended by staff result in a tax rate increase of 10.39%. Reducing the tax rate increase to 5% compared to fiscal year 23, the one we're currently in, would require $333,000 in fund balance. And note in that dashed box on the right, all of these cuts and revenues shown here would be required to get down to a 5% tax rate increase. This bar graph shows how much each of these cuts contribute to the tax rate reduction from 14.53% to 5%. 5% is the white bar. Bars in blue are staffing related. New revenues in green. You can see use of ARPA is the biggest contributor, or fund balance rather. The plans review fee is in dark green, and again, that is not guaranteed revenue. This section is what we've been calling the stretch budget. We understand the level services budget will more than stretch city taxpayers. However, more investments are needed for the city to meet its commitments, responsibly maintain its infrastructure, and advance its master plan goals in a way that's responsive to what the community has told us lately, not just to keep the status quo. Some of you on the call have uh, expressed such interests. This is important context for this year's proposed budget and recommended budget and what you may see in future years, especially as the TIF district expires. For context, historically, Winooski's leadership has tried to keep tax rate increases low to help Winooski's affordability. This has been a worthy goal given our lower income and fixed income community members. Winooski has averaged a 2.17% tax rate increase per year over the last 10 years. 2.17% has not allowed the city to keep up with maintaining its roads and sidewalks, nor staff some of its departments to the level of service needed by its growing number of residents and buildings. The population grew 10% between 2010 and 2020, according to the U.S. Census. It also added 295 dwelling units and 20,600 square feet of non-residential space in the gateway districts alone, which admittedly is probably most of the growth. That development in the community, the, that development was successfully promoted by the community when it adopted form-based code in 2016, 
which is great in some ways, but this growth needs increased services from community services, police, fire, and code enforcement, whereas those general fund covered staffing levels have stayed about the same. And achieving the city's 2019 to 2027 master plan and annual strategic priorities require yet more resources. Further, maybe a third of salaried staff average 50 to 60 hours a week for much of the year. Occasionally, that is absolutely within reason. Uh, for much of the year, that's getting to be a bit much. These staff are trying to deliver non-negotiable services like emergency response and support, while also allocating time to change how they do business to achieve master plan goals. In several departments, including fire, police, and community services, salaried staff are filling hourly staffing gaps on a regular basis and so have less time to strategically lead their service area. This takes a toll on them and more importantly, perhaps, their teams. This has in the past and continues to lead to burnout and turnover, which impacts who is left. And so it continues. There's a lot of information on this slide, so I'm not going to go over each of them in detail. The level services budget does not meet our current commitments and needs in dispatch services, public works infrastructure, police, or in maintaining the computers that we have, that we need to do business. Nor does it support advancing master plan goals in the ways that are current priorities by inadequately staffing fire, code enforcement for rental housing and public buildings, community services, and the community policing model, which requires more time per call and more time building relationships in the community outside of enforcement interactions. Note, there is a gray area between these lists, meaning some on the master plan goals list could be considered an unmet commitment. For example, the housing trust fund is a program we are running without an ongoing funding source. And there is a small grant portion currently of that fund. So if that continued indefinitely without any addition, we would deplete it. For context, these tables show the tax rates and changes for the city versus the Winooski School District's tax rate over the last 10 years. The data in the tables is in the online presentation for everyone's reference. Right now, we'll just focus on the average annual in rate increase shown in the red box. The city's is on the left. As you already heard, it's averaged 2.17% over 10 years. The middle rate, 3.08%, is what landlords, businesses, and others who don't officially live at their property in Winooski have paid in Winooski school district taxes, or rather the tax rate. And what pay renters pay indirectly is reflected, it would be a pass through that middle one. The rightmost rate, 5.32%, is what property owners who do live in their Winooski property have paid in taxes to the Winooski school district. One might say the city has not been able, has not kept up with its needs as much as the school district has. Note that the 10 year average consumer price index increase was 2.24%. I know I'm new to the community, so I'm going on a limb and saying that, and you can just blame me for saying those things. Finally, the proposed and recommended budgets. To get to a responsible budget, we need all the cuts that we discussed earlier, and all the new revenue we were recommended by staff also discussed earlier. And we need to add the expenses related to the regional dispatch commitment, which as of now is planned to come online in October 2023. All that together results in a tax rate increase of 11.62%. To limit the tax rate increase to 5%, I then propose we use $409,000 and fund balance. This is a responsible budget because it, it is under the projected TIF revenue of $432,000, meets the regional dispatch commitment, and keeps a reasonable margin. That means if we add any of these cuts back in or cannot realize the recommended revenue, we risk committing to more expenses than we will have revenues to cover when the TIF district expires and payments flow to the general fund. I'm gonna say that about three more times just to make sure <laughs> that's understood. For those of you who have not been following Winooski's tax increment financing or TIF story, the debt the city took on to improve public infrastructure downtown to attract private development will be paid off in May of 2024. And attract private development it did. 
Once the TIF expires, the city should start receiving $1,500,600 more than before the TIF district was created in property taxes, loan repayments, and payments in lieu of taxes for, non for the nonprofit entities inside the district. The other two are from the no nonprofit, uh, or from the profit en entities. Of that, we have about $445,000 in expenses that will continue, shown here under current allocations. Council has earmarked another $623,324 towards the Main Street project debt service. That leaves $432,276 in remaining TIF funds. Now, staff tell me the original plan when the TIF district was created was those funds would go toward catching up on funding existing services. But priorities have shifted as leadership has changed, as indicated by the Main Street revitalization and the regional dispatch votes. That and this year's inflation mean that we can't both catch up and meet all of our new commitments. That's why the proposed and recommended budgets are a mix of the cut and stretch scenarios. So finally, this is the proposed budget on taxpayers with and without the use of fund balance. We do recommend using some uh, fund balance. There might be a little confusion between those two terms, proposed and recommended. What's shown here as recommended is ultimately what I'm recommending, that you do use some fund balance. Without the use of fund balance, the proposed budget increases the tax rate by 11.62%. A Winooski homeowner with a home assessed at $225,000 would pay $310.95 more in taxes in fiscal year 24. With the use of fund balance in, uh, in the amount of $409,000 to get to a 5% tax rate increase, a Winooski homeowner with that same home assessed at $225,000 would pay $133.87 more, more in taxes in FY24. Now, while the biggest, the general fund is just one of eight funds, so the following slides will review the bigger picture of all the funds. Some good news, the increase in the overall budget for all funds is less than inflation. This slide shows the expenses across all the city's service areas. Note that as is appropriate, Public Works is the biggest share. That's because municipal infrastructure, including water lines, sewer lines, and sewer treatment, roads, sidewalks, and equipment for all of that is expensive. The water fund rate increase needed to cover expenses is significant, although the dollar increase for typical household usage is $72. The wastewater fund rate increase needed to cover expenses, including some needed capital costs, is also significant, though to a lesser degree. The dollar increase for a typical household is $53 for a year. As noted previously, staff recommended the Senior Center Programs budget be moved into the general fund. Those are the highlights of other funds. Other funds raised, this is a different funds than the other funds in the previous slide. I mentioned earlier that staff do a good job of obtaining grants and donations. The biggest portion was guaranteed COVID-19 ARPA, but they still raised about $139,000 beyond that in fiscal year 22. On the right here is the Main Street revitalization example of how staff have leveraged funds for big projects. The details are there, again, for public re reference on the website and uh, in that link, um, and for council in your budget book. For today's purposes, just note how the yellow part, which is the amount that the city needs to bond for, is offset by all the other sources and uh, the other colors on the top part of that pie chart. So again, as you consider whether and how much fund balance council to use, remember that any amount you do commit from fund balance for FY24, you're either committing the same amount of TIF revenue to in FY25, or to raising the same amount by increasing property taxes in FY25. Otherwise, we may need to cut the service that amount is paying for from the FY25 budget, or other services, technically. So, next we'll go into various departments. Tonight will be general government departments. Next week will be community services. The final votes that council will need to make, take are on the general fund budget and to approve the warning for town meeting, day, town meeting day, to approve the individual enterprise and special revenue funds for fiscal year 24, 
to approve the fee and rate resolutions related to water and, and uh, wastewater, and then convene as trustees of the Winooski Community Development Corporation to receive and allocate funding for FY24. If that's confusing, I don't blame you. So that was the end of my overview presentation. Would council like to take a break or entertain some questions from the public before we move on to general departments? Let's do questions first. Um, and I would be happy to let public, public comments, questions come in first. You all have been sitting here for a long time. Um, so please feel free to use raise hand or chat and let us know if you wish to speak. Um, in, in the meantime, I do want to express appreciation to you and the whole team. Like, these are really difficult circumstances that we're working under. It's really unfortunate because I feel like we were on a really good trajectory in recent years. And we're being, I don't know, kind of hamstrung by the same problems that everyone else is facing. So the effort that you've put into fighting things to, to try to make it work, um, you know, I appreciate that these are not easy suggestions and that you are forward thinking about it too. Um, and I don't know, it's tough. And we're gonna, we're gonna, everyone's gonna be a little disappointed to some extent, but. Any, um, I haven't seen any hands raised yet. Are there any clarifying questions that counselors wanna ask? Um, I do have some emails that folks sent in to me that they were hoping to sh that could be shared. Yeah, are these, this, I think all those folks are attending tonight. <laughs> um, if not, feel free. I was reached out to by a couple people who were unable to attend due to various reasons or other commitments. Um, I, the first one I have is just someone who wanted to state as vigorously as possible that they oppose the, the current budget proposal. Winooski has a long way to go before the changes that are necessary will be realized and integrated. And this is specifically on removing the equity director and youth interventionist positions. Um, another, uh, I can, I'll forward these along to you as well, just so. Yeah, I think we'll send to the group, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but definitely just want to highlight some of these two of, once more, another uh, resident expressing concern specifically about the youth interventionist and equity director positions, um, as well as concern about the potential to hire administration for police, but cut books, you know, funding for books and other recreational services, especially thinking about, you know, the way that goes towards helping our community and keeping our community safe. Do you have more? Yes, but I'll. Sure, um, I, I see a hand raised in the chat. Indra, go ahead when you're ready. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I understand that the inflation has brought a lot of challenges and if the impact of in, uh, the inflation is to be understood, I think, you know, there are many members that live within the Winooski city where we can go and ask. And I don't think they will be saying that they will be cutting their expenses from feeding their child or something that's very urgent and important to them. And when I see a particular city or government uh, office trying to cut down a certain position using economic challenge or the inflation or the lack of budget, uh, as one of the reasons that it kind of showcases that it's not a priority for them. And to quote uh, the former deputy mayor and the former representative, well, soon to be former uh, representative from Winooski, uh, Hal Poston, it kind of shows where city stands. The budget kind of showcases the morality, the ethics, the priority of the office. And I am a former resident of Winooski who is in Winooski most of my time, uh, and also somebody who's really suffered uh, the presence of racial inequity and injustice within our system. And if you're unaware, uh, yeah, happy to come help you understand someday, or you can simply Google uh, 
it was within Winooski that I suffered, but I continue to revere Winooski and often keep on thinking about moving back to Winooski because it's the first city that I got resettled in after coming to, uh, to the US, and it's a city that I really do love. And when I heard that, you know, we are trying to cut down the position of equity director, youth interventionist, when in fact we just started doing this work. Winooski hasn't made progress. Like, let's not, uh, you know, sleep on, uh, on thinking that like we have made any progress. It's not been made. I am a brown man who was labeled a terrorist by the authority, the system in Winooski. So I, I can see it, I can tell you with certainty that the issue of racial injustice hasn't really gone away. And I am somebody who really does this work outside of Winooski at the state government level, national organizations. And I know that keeping only one position is not gonna solve the whole issue, but it does show where our priorities are. And if that conviction that I saw, uh, you know, from mayor, you giving talks at different places, Elaine, when we talk, right, like, if racial justice is a priority, I think it will come across in the budget that we are trying to propose. And if the first position that we are trying to get rid of is equity director, when in fact we haven't really grappled with the difficult question that comes with being the most diverse uh, city in the New England area, in Vermont, uh, something that we take pride in, something that we state in every single document, it really makes me uh, start question the values that we are trying to uphold or the value that we showcase outside. So I really do hope that, you know, we do consider keeping the equity director and youth intervention in this position because without that, it does not speak well to, you know, the image of Winnesky, the commitment that we express publicly. And I, I understand it's a challenging time. Again, you know, I also work and I know the challenge of inflation. I understand I work with different organizations. I understand the challenge of budgeting. But I think we can be a little more creative and showcase the ethics, moral, and the value that we continue to preach around the state and around the country. So just seeing that this is the line item that we're trying to cut, citing uh, economic challenges, it just doesn't board well with me. And I'm speaking that as somebody who really does love Winooski and somebody who was victimized by Winooski, to be honest with you. So if we really want to make it be a safe place for the people that we continue to talk about, the members of our community, please ask yourself, like, what does this say about Winooski that takes pride in being the most diverse city in the state of Vermont? The city that continues to perpetuate where a lot of citizens continue to be victimized because of racial injustice. So it's, it, it's just something that I hope the city council members, the, state gov uh, the city government really reflect on. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Indra. We have another comment. Uh, Andy, go ahead when you're ready. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I was one of the uh, other folks that had emailed in earlier, but I have just a couple minutes. Um, so I did want to just kind of reaffirm, like, thank you so much to the city manager for sharing all of that. That was really helpful information. Um, and I'm really looking forward to kind of looking at those slides in more detail. Um, so I just really, as a member of the public, like I really appreciated the presentation that you provided. Um, that was really helpful. I still, I still do feel strongly that we need to fill the, the equity director position. Um, and I appreciate the thought of if we cut it, we, that would be a priority to get back. Um, but I, I do agree with Indra that like, if we take that off of our plate now, you know, that that it feels like a lot of the work that we've been putting in as a community, um, it, it will signal to people that it maybe wasn't um, with the future in mind. And I just don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see us lose out on good candidates um, in the meantime. Um, and, you know, one part of the pie chart that I, I would like to look at more closely was um, the section when we were looking at where tax or revenue goes um, to, it looked like 33% went to the police budget. And I, and I was curious if the council is going to kind of look at that with more detail. That was a pretty big chunk. And I'm just curious as to like kind of where that money, that 33%, what that does fund and what that doesn't fund. And um, yeah, I just, 
really wanted to thank the city manager, but if anyone has any idea of, of what that 33% kind of involves, that would be really helpful to know. Go ahead, Elaine. Yes, that's a, that's a very reasonable question. So um, the emergency services budget presentation will be on this January, when is it? Anybody on the leadership team, feel free to jump in. January 9th. Thank you. January 9th. So the 33% will be uh, discussed in more detail then. I, I would add that that's the only department that's staffed 24-7. So even there may be less staff, it costs more because we're keeping it staffed that much. Right. And I, I will mention too, uh, let's see, I'm going to get back there. So I, I, I zip through this the slide very quickly on stretch budget items, and I know how this sounds to some of our community members, um, but we are, I'd mentioned before that some of our emergency services are where the leadership team, so in this case the police chief, is spending a lot of time filling shifts and so isn't able to lead the department. Uh, so that is, that's actually, we're actually under, budgeting for that department now. And I know it's hard to, to see that and see, well, okay, we should be spending that money elsewhere. Uh, but if we, if we are going to appropriately staff the department for their safety, we need a certain number of officers. So we'll go into more detail uh, in the July, or I'm sorry, January 9th presentation. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I think Coralie is next. Probably whenever you're ready. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for this opportunity to speak up regarding this issue. It's for me very surprising to hear <clears throat> this cut <laughs> in your stuff. Um, in a way, it, it is. In, a, in another way, it's not. But I, it, it really is giving, uh, or it's going to give a very negative um, outlook of what is priority in the city of Winooski. And it's very sad to to um, have that situation in the city that diversity is something that is very much uh, a characteristic for, for this community. So uh, uh, I understand as well as the, the necessary uh, cuts uh, in the budget limitations that you are expressing but I would prefer to put in line, you know, secretaries or, I don't know, people, other people that uh, roles and functions are not as key uh, as the equity director, as the youth interventionist. We have been facing a lot of um, problems within our youth and I have saw you in one of the Somali community meetings recently, and you know very well why that meeting was um, originated, because um, a lot of our youth are, you know, are in so much trouble. And for you to cut a youth interventionist from the city of Winooski, uh, I don't know what is the adjective that I'm looking at right now, but it's giving a, a different message to the community. And I want you to be more consistent of what you're saying and what you are promising and what you're trying to do and what you're cutting right now. Because if you don't have this as a priority, then how this is gonna work for 
community, diver, the community with diverse backgrounds. Iwunuski. And um, I think, again, I, I agree with previous um, people who were expressing um, the opposition of this cut, uh, that we could be more creative. Financially, yeah, it's, you know, I understand that can be challenging, but I also, I understand that that the city of Winooski leadership team is very smart, is very intelligent, and will be able to find another way to finance those crucially important roles for our community. There are other people, like me, community organizer or leaders in the community who are trying to work together towards those issues of diversity, social justice, youth, um, engagement, but that doesn't mean that the city should just take their hands off and just rely on other programs and services outside. Since you are the leaders of this community and the community really relied on you for, for this kind of major important issues for them. And I thought it was also for you all. And, and I please, uh, I plead for you to reconsider and to observe other ways to adjust your budget accordingly. Thank you. Thanks, Carly. I don't see any other public comments. Other questions from council? Can I say a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Daisy put their hand back up. Oh, it's back up. Oh. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Hi, it's Daisy Verbecco. Um, I'm a parent and community member and incoming um, state rep. And I just want to say thank you to the members that wrote in and um, those of you who called in, Andy and Indra and Coralie. I just want to reiterate, I support all of them um, and just really am concerned about um, the elimination of the position of equity director and um, student um, or youth interventionist. I think that um, the removal of those positions from the budget is not in line with our strategic plan for this community, nor is it in line with what I have heard from community members um, over the last year. Um, it's not in line with my personal experience of what this community needs in order to be a safe and healthy place. Um, and I think if we want to appropriately staff a safe community, um, we need to underpin every decision with the advice and expertise of an equity director. We've had that before, and we have sorely been missing that expertise since that departure. Um, I'm disappointed that we have not more aggressively pursued filling that position. Um, and I, um, again, just implore you to listen to those folks who spoke before me about the importance of keeping these positions, and I'm sure that you'll reconsider that in the upcoming um, discussions that you have about our budget. Do you want to talk about Elaine? Uh, yeah, I was debating. Boss? Right. So the, the equity director position, um, Actually, I'm glad there's more people on, on the call today because I've been trying to put this message out and it's a, a, a little bit of a, yeah, anyway, more chances to talk about it. So the reason why I haven't filled that position yet or re-advertised that position rather is because we lost that equity director because the city wasn't ready. It wasn't ready for an equity director at that level of expertise. And what ended up happening, and again, this isn't anyone specific's fault, but there was a lack of leadership. So the equity director was hired and the former city manager left one month later. So there was a leadership vacuum in terms of making sure that the staff knew how to interact with an equity director in a way that wouldn't overload that person. Uh, what ended up happening is what often, often happens to such folks, so such people who fill those roles, is that the rest of the organization uh, then defers to that person and then uh, involves them in every single conversation related to equity. 
And there wasn't anyone else to, to set the stage and say, we need to do some of our own homework. This is the role differentiation. So that person became extremely overloaded. And eventually, that's why she left. Uh, there was a few other reasons, too, but that was the main one. So my goal since then has been, uh, all the way up until I saw this budget, how, what the budget realities were for FY24, my goal had been to get staff to a point where all of us knew, all of us knew that it was part, equity is part of our jobs. And it's fine if you still don't, still don't agree and think that you know, we should be um, filling this position in FY24. I'm just explaining why we haven't filled it yet. We haven't quite gotten to that point. The leadership team, I think, is getting close now. We're, we're, not, we're having the conversations about how. how. What does that mean for each of us to, to have, um, have a role in advancing equity? And as some of the other folks have observed, and it's totally uh, justified that we're not making very fast progress, um, but some of that is figuring, figuring out what it means. What does it mean for me to have an equity role? What does it mean for a public works director to have an equity role? What does it mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it, down to the staff, what does it mean to be an inclusive coworker? What does it mean to be an inclusive uh, public servant? Then there's operations, right? How do we change operations so that they make sense? Are we sure that the, that the, the order in which we're plowing sidewalks makes sense for the most underserved members of our community? That's just one example. Obviously, there's lots more. So I just wanted to point out that staff hasn't been sitting on its hands. In the meantime, it, there's certainly more that we could be doing. And if we had an equity director, we might be able to do them faster. My worry was to refill that, the, the position with another person would, who would then be burnt out me, immediately because I had not taken enough of a role in setting the stage with the rest of the staff as to what a, appropriate, what's appropriate for them to do versus what we should all be doing. And I'll stop there. Thanks for sharing, Natalie. Um, I did want to just say, so I did receive uh, five different communications. One of them was a letter from Representative Hall Colson, former Winooski Deputy Mayor, um, which he was hoping to read, but I also see that he's on the call, so I don't want to um, step over that too if he wanted to speak directly. Or we can give him a moment. I saw Coralie's hand up again. Yes, um, thank you again for uh, giving me the chance to to speak up for what um, just Elaine has mentioned and as a response to all our comments. And I see where, you, where you're coming from but at the same time, I wanted to present the other side of the coin. It's, I think it's more important now than ever where leadership is getting established to also get a, a equity director and youth interventionist in the leadership establishment process, um, especially because it will help to redirect all those, you know, plans and processes, they has to be equitable. They has to be making sense. Because the, what about if you do all that work? And supposedly you got, get the platform ready for the new director. And then this new director comes and say, we have to change all the process because of this and this and this. I'm not saying that that, that will happen. Maybe it's aligned with what equity, equity is, uh, the processes that are gonna be established now. But if now, all the work that has been done between now and 2025, maybe have to be redone again because of the new recommendations. Um, I believe that in the leadership position, should always have an expertise for equity and diversity and the use as well, <laughs> mainly because you need that kind of input in order to move forward and establish a really a better process that will serve all, especially in this community that diversity is, is the greatest thing that you guys can offer. So it is only on your best benefit to invest now 
in that kind of role and expertise. Um, I cannot address enough uh, because money is always going to be a problem. And if you're if you're using this as a way of leveraging the way that you're going to cut these roles, then you're always going to cut those roles first. And that is not a good precedent to have. It's not. I believe that there should be, it must be another way to address those challenges that you're facing in your budget. And even if it's part-time, <laughs> even like that, um, I mean, it has to be a compromise here. You cannot move it forward without those kind of roles they are essential, especially for the community that you are serving. I can't not address enough. This is not, it's, you have no choice but to also, also, you know, make sure you address that priority. It is your priority and you were always talking about the priority and then all of a sudden you can just not cut, you can just cut it. People put resources where the matter is, where they matter. Therefore, you're gonna be telling your community you serve that, that is, those issues don't matter to you. So I just wanted to put that in perspective. Thank you again. Thank you, Coralie. I see Hal's hand is raised. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council, and uh, staff and community members uh, who have been part of this conversation. Uh, I, I submitted a, a statement uh, to Councilor Hurd. Uh, I trust the councilors will have a chance to review it and consider it. Um, I don't have a lot more to add to the conversation, uh, aside that, you know, this, this is a, a a path that we decided to take several years back when I was on city council and to really meet head on the structural and systemic racism that pervades our, our schools, our city government and our community. So I, I just strongly oppose, you know, eliminating the position of, you know, equity director and, you know, the youth interventionists, it, it's just, it, it just doesn't make sense if we're going to move forward and be a truly, you know, beloved and, you know, embracing community. Um, because without those resources, we're just not going to get there. It, it's said it's that, that simple. So I just really beg the the leaders in the room to really, you know, take a look in the mirror and and are, are you nodding that yes, we're going to pursue justice in our community as opposed to, you know, just us? Because I think that's what this means if we eliminate these positions. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's what, what Indra I think opened up with in this conversation a while ago, you know, this is, this is a moral issue. You know, a budget is a moral document and, and it speaks to what we believe in and what we um, want to pursue for, for the best of our community. So we've got to be creative about finding those dollars to make the budget work, but once again, we'll be following the path of so many other organizations and communities and city governments where the first thing goes is diversity, equity, inclusion. You know, we, 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 can't, we can't afford it. And I beg to differ. Um, <laughs> we, we, we will not succeed unless we can afford it. So that's all I have to say. And thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Hal. Do we have another hand raised?
Looks like Surge BTV, you are good to go. Thank you. Um, my name is Courtney Fleischer. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm actually um, logged on through that, um, through our Surge BTV account. Um, I am a psychologist at the University of Vermont Medical Center, and I wanted to um, <clears throat> agree with uh, information that's been communicated by previous um, speakers around the importance of um, having a DEI um, leader within our within um, our city government, um, as well as a youth intervention specialist. Um, I, I think for a couple of reasons in addition to what has been communicated. Um, so um, in my role as a psychologist at the hospital, I see the, the um, the impact of the pandemic on our youth and see the youth who have been um, coming to our emergency department from from Winooski, from other com communities around our area. But um, I see youth from community from our community as well um, in the, sitting in the emergency department awaiting higher levels of care and it just concerns me about um, the youth in our community and hearing not just about um, mental health concerns that are pre-existing, but mental health concerns that are um, affected by issues around racism in our community. Uh, and while I appreciate the idea of, um, uh, you know, organizations not being ready for the role of a DEI, um, coordinator, um, you know, I have seen that in other contexts as well, um, and I think that it's also possible to look at um, <clears throat> shifting what that role accomplishes and focuses on, as opposed to um, removing that role from our budget in the upcoming year. I think that um, diversity is essential for the future of our community, both as a, a wonderful place to live, as well as for the economic vitality of our city. And um, along with others, I encourage us to explore other ways to be creative with the budget and maintain those positions. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Thomas, you had a question? Um, I did, yes. The youth interventionist, uh, Elaine, you had mentioned, sorry, I'm trying to find the exact number, um, that 28 hours can support a caseload of four to five individuals. I was just, is that four to five individuals a week or a month, or what does that look like? It's, my understanding is it's at a time. Okay. So sometimes it'll be higher, sometimes it's lower, depending on the needs of those individuals. I was just trying to get a gauge for like a total amount of individuals in a year or something like that. But. Right, that wouldn't necessarily be reflective because some of them might uh, be with the per with the youth of interventions for longer. Okay. I have a similar question on the AmeriCorps position. Uh, you said reduces program by twenty percent. What programming specifically? Uh, Ray is going to get more into that in, in the his in his presentation. That's yes, fair. and community services, which is next week. Thank you. Um, and a question for probably a future meeting as well. Um, what would it cost for the re rental registry to be self-funded? Self-funded. Angela, do you have an answer handy? Currently, budget-wise, the um, rental registry program is a deficit of about $26,000, I believe. Um, it is included in that uh, tool that I sent out to council earlier today um, where you'd see the net impact. Uh, that is not necessarily actual performance. We have seen the deficit be as high as 40000 depending on revenue collections. Um, the projected budget for FY24 includes $18,000 worth of commercial inspection billing and 100% collection of the rental registry program as outlined. Thank you. If I could, Mayor. Uh, just to back up to Thomas's question again. I, I do want to underline something that actually a resident, uh, I believe, pointed out, which is that um, 
the, the absolute number of the youth interventionist impacts might look low, but we're intervening with that program and through that staff person before it becomes something worse. So you can think about in terms of, and it, there's no way to calculate this, but like if the youth interventionist hadn't intervened, there might be a lot of other costs that come from police services or who knows what else subsequent to that, or cost to the medical system like that um, caller in was, was talking about. So the, the impact is not strictly just a number of people, but like in the, in the ripple effect of those particular interventions. Any other, yeah, sorry. Are there any other high level clarifying questions? Jim? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I was wondering what the intention is for maybe potentially updating the CPI numbers. Right now, they're based on October to October. Ideally, we, you know, we obviously can't use February to February. We'll have one more round between this. Do we expect to change those uh, estimates of COLA if we have an update in the next uh, couple weeks? It's possible we are attempting to nail down a, um, a discussion with the other contract that is using ASME. February to February. Yeah, ASME is set in stone as an October to October. That is within their contract. So, right, so I think specifically the contract that's February to February. And that, so that could be updated with, I'm just curious if all of our personnel number or our personnel numbers will change when you do. Will that forecast change or will we just stick with the October CPI for the February of contract? Um, will, we, will the budget as presented maintain numbers using the October CPI or can we update it with the November CPI, which would be more likely to reflect the February CPI? Does that make sense? Oh. I'm not saying use the November in the contract, this uh, escalation that has to be the February amount, but can you update this numbers of salary and of salary based on that if it, the CPI changes? Angela, do you want to comment on past practice? Um, so right now what is presented is potentially worst case scenario. We can very easily update this for November to November CPI um, for the... Or the, the November estimate of February, right? I think that's what... So the, the estimates for forecasting of February CPI have not changed. They still range between 4 and 8%. Um, and that is the estimate that we are currently using for non-union staff. Um, we have gone a little higher oh. for the union staff. Um, one is because ASME is set in stone. ASME is October to October CPI by their contract. FOP's contract does currently state February to February. Um, so we could change that, but there were um, gonna be discussions potentially with, with that union. So yeah, I think my, like the bigger context for this question would be if we're making decisions about substantive cuts and then we end up with extra budget latitude because our February CPI is lower than we're currently modeling. Um, um, I can I would, tell you what the impact would be if I used the February to February projection number instead of the October to October um, and, and give you some idea of scale. Yeah, it might be interesting when we get towards the, the middle of January is more what I'm thinking, um, that we have that side by side with the decisions we have to make about what to eliminate and where. Um, and I'd be comfortable sticking with more what the current, I, I, I would probably be more comfortable with sticking with the November to November than using a February forecast. But um, it's just something even just understanding the Delta, it doesn't, the whole budget doesn't need to be rewritten, but understanding what, you know, if the CPI goes up, we we'll want to know that we be more constrained if the CPI goes down in the next month. We have a little less um, constraint. Thanks, um, Yeah. So the, the savings to this budget, if we were to use the 6.5% versus the 7.7, .7 is $18,000. That's great for sensitivity. Thank you. Okay, sorry, Aurora. Um, this first question might also be helpful for members of the public. Um, so when you're talking about using the 
uh, 4,000 or 409,000 fund balance. Is that using ARPA dollars or is that using other dollars that are in that fund? So right now ARPA is f reserve. So it, you know, it, it's all the same now. Right. So yes, potentials. It's one-time funding. Yeah, I think that's the main. Like, you're, we're never going to get back that 409 because yeah. it's coming out of 2.1 million, which we're never going to get back. Right. Okay. Just want or get to again rather. Clarify that. Um, and then my question, uh, other question, is about the regional dispatch starting in October 2023. Is this still for startup costs? And at a certain point, isn't this supposed to you know, decrease the amount of money? Um, so I'm just wondering right there, like I understand that we have, that that will leave an administrative need for the police, but then are we, you know, we currently have, or uh, I believe you listed uh, s seven uh, dispatch staff dispatchers and on-call dispatchers kind of across so those positions would hypothetically now not be paid by the city but be paid by the regional dispatch so i'm just trying to figure out like why is this additional costs now when i believe ultimately this is gonna be a decrease on city resources right so if this is a uh, one of those like angela says you pull one lever and two other levers pop up sort of scenarios so um team feel free to angela's ready kitchen. to respond <laughs> yeah, so um, the I've, I've done the cost analysis for this for elaine actually and part of the issue here is that the regional dispatch is not standing up until october so we have several months where we are paying the existing dispatch staff salary and benefits um, and the benefits proportion that we're paying out in that time period and the, the severance pay that is built into the union contract um, are helping to, to make this need some extra costs next year. Just looking at regional dispatch alone and the needed additional admin support we would only need about ten to twelve thousand dollars more than what is in the existing budget for dispatch staff. Um, but it's gone up to the seventy thousand number that's in this budget because we have to pay for the existing dispatchers for three months. There's another wrinkle, which is that Wollaston is needing dispatch services now. They used to be dispatched by state police. They're one of the five, and we're sharing all the costs proportionately to our call volume. They uh, are not, since they have to change now and there's some contractual pieces for the dispatch service they're changing to, they're only paying for their fire dispatch in FY20 in their budget request. So the rest of the communities are shouldering an increase because they're not coming on with police at the same time the rest of us are planning to. Uh, the other just, piece, just to answer your other question, so capital costs are supposed to be in this fiscal year, FY23, and that and dispatch, if everything goes according to plan, which it might not, if everything goes according to plan, the idea is dispatching service would begin October. Not all of the the communities would probably be able to come on at the same time, so there would be some staging there, um, and our costs would be slightly less in the months that we weren't getting it right away. Okay, so, so then next year, is this going to continue to be a increased cost, or is this again just because we're in the startup stage? I guess that's really what I want to establish. Is ultimately, is this saving the city money? Because it, it will. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. The existing dispatch staff um, is about four hundred and fifty-eight thousand um, dollars. The initial CCPSA cost to the city is three hundred and twenty-one thousand, and the estimated all-in full benefits, assuming a family plan position, because we we always assume that somebody's going to take full benefits um, for a records person dealing with NCIC and really confidential information, is about a hundred thousand. So it is less than what we have budgeted for existing dispatch in the future. For operations, just to be clear, there will, there might be unforeseen 
hard capital costs, such as for radio upgrades. Right. Gotcha. I guess I'm here more in the police budget of exactly what we're suggesting with the police administrative assistant, because administrative assistant, that title doesn't imply that kind of pay. But so could this position then help fill if you are thinking about cutting other vital positions? Could, I, could we wait till the public enough. safety one to get in the weeds on that cost? And then I will say that since we've been talking about regional dispatch, there has always been an understanding that was going to create a gap in administrative support that would likely be an yes. added cost. But we can get more into the weeds when that one comes up. It's a fair question, though, about what the long-term impact is of that. Yep. Could we go ahead then and take a break, five-minute break, and then do the general administration overview? So it's, I've got 7.52, we'll reconvene at 7.57. It's the 8, I'll reconvene the meeting. Just give Elena a minute to pull up the presentation again. Oh, I'm ready when you are. Oh, we're ready. Okay. Okay. So. Wait a minute. In the last hour, I forgot how to do it. <laughs> Okay, here's if anyone is left. Yes, okay. So now we'll spend a few slides reviewing the general department government budgets and I'm glad, it looks like most people stayed, so that's great. These are the staff considered part of general government departments. Another, an administration department on the left, we have the city clerk's office uh, that maintains official records, holds elections, takes payments, and manages certain licenses and permits. You'll see with each um, office that there's a number in parentheses, that's the number of people in that department. The other parts of the administration department, again on the left, to provide support to all city departments, including financial management, staff recruitment and retention, advising on equitable service provision, and communications with the community. On the right, planning and zoning, plans for the growth and development of the city through long range planning and regulatory review to ensure land development is consistent with adopted goals and objectives. The purpose of the housing office is to develop and implement initiatives that support a mix of quality housing that maintains and enhances Winooski's unique sense of place and supports the needs of the entire community. The parking department supports the supply of publicly access accessible parking for economic vitality. And finally, the tax increment financing district doesn't pay for staff, it holds the funds for operating the TIF district. General administration is mostly services, so again, the budget is largely related to people, either in staff or professional services. This is the roll-up view, meaning the summary view of the general fund administration budget. Last fiscal year, current fiscal year, and the recommended next fiscal year. The recommended general administration budget is actually decreasing by 0.97% due to the equity director position being cut from this department in the recommended budget. So what is included in the fiscal year 24 general administration recommended, recommended budget? budget. Um, these were already reviewed, so it'll be top of mind for you folks today. Uh, reducing legal expenses budget from the most recent two-year average to the four-year average. 
Leave the equity director ba uh, position vacant, net of anticipated decrease to grant revenues, uh, which would, um, we're estimating would decrease because we wouldn't have a person to help carry out the deliverables for that grant um, as much as if we had it filled. We're still committed to fill, filling some of those, fulfilling some of those uh, commitments, but wouldn't be as much as if we had an expert there. A $1,000 increase for Channel 17 services, an increase to the software services line in recognition of increased cost and importance of computers in our, in our organization. Uh, five years is recommended to make sure that, uh, five year replacement cycle is recommended to make sure that computers don't fail when we really need them. Um, we're, some of our commuters are currently at six or seven years. Now we'll take a quick march through the other funds. For the tax increment financing fund, the good news here is that the 1.0646 circled in red at the bottom right indicates that we are meeting our one-to-one -one bond covenant debt ratio. In plain English, that means we have enough money to pay for financing. Showing this slide again to remind you how much council has already committed of the anticipated TIF revenue and what remains. Again, if you use more than this amount of fund balance in FY24 to buy down the tax rate, we'll need to cut those services in FY25 or raise taxes to cover them. The Community Development Fund, which pays for staff and staff training that advance community development. It has a healthy balance, again, on the bottom right. And similarly, the on-street parking fund is doing okay for now. The Cascades Garage, the current one that we have, um, is being managed very responsibly to cover cap anticipated capital costs. Final thoughts. Now this slide is the fun one, and I'm being sarcastic. And I know it's already been fun, so yeah. This slide describes uncertainties that have the potential to impact the city's financial picture. There are six that I want to describe. Inflation on October was 7.7% compared to October of 2021. Recent news stories have quoted Federal Reserve Bank governors speculating that next year will be hard, but not as hard as this year, but no one really knows what inflation will actually do next fiscal year. The city plans to sell the O'Brien Community Center to Champlain Housing Trust. I think this can happen in calendar year 2023, but can't be sure as some pieces are out of our control. Once CHT owns it, the city will need to pay rent for spaces we control. Uh, we have discussed expanding our footprint to be able to partner with other service providers important to our community, but there are financial unknowns in that. At your next meeting, December 12th, the Public Works team will be requesting your authorization to bid out the Main Street project. We have concerns that bids will come in significantly over budget, as the trend has been for many projects in the last year. Recruitment for police and fire have been a challenge for several years nationally, but the last two or so seem to have been much worse. For police, the global narrative makes it less attractive of a career. For fire, our reliance on per diem staff, who, however, need to be highly trained, makes it hard to recruit enough of a roster to provide coverage overnight, especially when our full-time staff isn't working, or shouldn't be working, but often does anyway. This recruitment challenge is also a national trend in per diem fire services. Also remember that we have increased these department staffing levels even though the community need has grown in terms of number of people and number of housing units or in commercial building space. Another item of concern is 17 Abenaki Way redevelopment. Council is discussing this tonight in executive session so there isn't anything to definitive to say about this right now. Finally, regional dispatch. So in addition to complication to what we've already described as being complicated, a week ago Monday, the Chinning County Public Safety Authority, CCPSA, the body that is tasked to stand up regional dispatch, voted on a budget and contribution chairs from the five member communities, including Winooski. Um, the, the, the Williston contribution is the one that was voted. My proposed budget includes that FY24 allocation for Winooski. On Tuesday, last week, the Colchester Select Board voted down their FY23 voluntary contribution and voted to pull out their FY24 contribution from their manager's FY24 budget. Regional dispatch is a tricky thing to put together and this is just the latest bend in the roller coaster ride. 
and it isn't over yet. CCPSA board members historically assumed the authority would need to borrow money to get started. The members may be having that conversation again. The CCPSA board is next scheduled to meet on December 19th. Ideally, we will have a plan in time to inform the budget you proposed to voters in March. So I realize this is a lot to absorb, so I will end with thanks to you for putting in so much time to review so much material, for the public for engaging on these important matters, and thanks to the leadership team that's put in a lot of time preparing this material and managing resources responsibly in serving our community. And a very special thanks to our finance director, Angela Aldirai, because without her, we wouldn't have a budget. And I will end there. And if there's any other questions you want to raise now from the public or from you all. Oh, actually, before we go to every, the, any remaining questions, I asked Angela to respond to a couple of uh, questions that Jim had. If you would, Angela, please. Sure. Um, so, Councillor Duncan had sent in some questions about year-to-date information for local options tax. We received the first quarterly payment in November for local options tax in the amount of $126,272, of which $6,313 is going to downtown Winooski in accordance with the 5% allocation that Council has contributed to them this fiscal year. Um, if that trend continues, uh, the net to the city is, is going to be about 480,000 of revenue. Um, we have budgeted 450. For the pilot, um, we have received the State of Vermont pilot. It's a one-time payment that we received in October in the amount of $5,683. We received the CHT one-time pilot payment on October 11, $10,573.77. The final pilot that is in the general fund, which is for the Winooski Housing Authority, will not be received until June and is based on their, a proportion of their net profit. So their rents minus their operational expenses and then we get a percentage of that. So it's unknown at this time what that would be. Um, during COVID, their contribution to the city was around 59,000. Last year, we saw that be 130 something thousand. Um, their average is normally around 74. So I imagine that last year's was a lot of uh, catch up in back rents that had been paid during their calendar year. Um, there was a question about whether or not the cost for regional dispatch appeared in the professional services categories for both fire and police. It only appears in the police budget, and that is because that is where the offsetting expenses were also housed. The increase that you see in the professional services within the fire budget is for that contract with St. Michael's for 46000 Thank you, Angela. Any other general administration questions? And shut this down if this is too in the weeds. Um, so we went through this whole process of really focusing on housing and proposing this housing position, which we're now proposing to cut 30 hours, making it virtual. virtual ten, ten, 10 hours. 10 hours, so from 40 to 30, which will make it a lot harder to hire someone for that position. We... Yeah you know, working on all this because housing is such a priority, this removed the original grant focus of the um, position that uh, Heather won't check. What should we be considering instead? It would be a lot easier to hire someone part-time for a grant position that could then help meet some of these glaring needs for additional funds. So that's just something that's kind of arising for me is one of the reasons that it might be that we're in the red besides of course inflation is that we haven't had the resource and expertise to look for grants um, so as much as like I don't think we should 
remove the housing, that's a huge thing, but if we're not gonna end up being able to fill that position, why don't we try and fill a grant position that we could then hopefully get other funding? And I understand that grants are not good to put positions on, but maybe the grants could fulfill other costs and then we can put more stable funds towards salary. That's just something that sticks out to me is, you know, we went through all that work to make it a housing position, but we've acknowledged time and time again the need for some help with applying for grants because other staff is at capacity. Something you can I have some thoughts, but I, I'd like to consult staff and to provide a thorough answer. Okay, thank you. I have a question. I do want to make one just quick note that per city policy, a 30 hour week position is considered a full time benefits eligible position. That is helpful. Thank you, Angela. Does Jim want to go? Oh, I didn't see his hand. Thank you. I think he said me. Um, and I guess I want to acknowledge that part of the reason we're in this situation with the equity director position is because we're using grant funds for a position. And there was always an expectation that this would ramp to the TIF expenditure. So while it's not listed as a planned allocation, like that was shown in the funding profile for this position when we approved it three years ago. Um, so I think you're, 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 what we're giving up in having a housing initiative director that is 40 hours a week, what we're giving up in terms of grant writing is important. Um, I think we would not really gain capacity um, through additional grant writing in a way that's sustainable as we're seeing this equity director uh, vulnerability. Not that actually, sorry. Go for it, no, go. It just rose a question for me of, you included in here kind of the tentative allocation. So is that just Main Street revitalization? So not considering any other, like Jim just referenced, the like we talked about potentially moving the equity director to TIF funding. So we're just looking at the Main Street revitalization with the um, kind of what we've considered. So I'm not sure if I got your question, but if you're looking at that TIF slide. Um, so that's the only tentative allocation out of TIF. The other ones are current operating expenses for the TIF district. Gotcha. What, what was your question? I guess I was, I was just maybe confused by some of your phrasing previously of kind of talking about council has not necessarily promised, but talked about certain expenses. So you're not taking that into, you're just uh, any of those into consideration um, before getting to that remaining amount. Uh, correct. So there, go ahead, Angel. There's over, um, I have a, yeah, previous spreadsheet. <laughs> Yeah, the previous spreadsheet has over $2 million of potential items that have been discussed. They were other options that have been at various points in time saying maybe we could do that with TIF funds. And yes, the equity director is on that list, but we have not taken any formal votes of council for those items. Okay. Main Street has had formal votes that have tentatively approved the TIF as the source of debt repayment in the future. Okay, thank you. Bernie, you had a question? Yes, um, just thinking another high level question about um, uh, areas for negotiation for expenses, um, and primarily around um, healthcare coverage and benefits and uh, it's a bit in the weeds for me to really know anything about, honestly, but um, have we gone out to bid or looked at other providers um, or talked with the current provider to negotiate the, the um, proposed expenses at all? I, you know, I'm on a couple other boards where that is part of the practice, so I don't know if that is something that we've done or looked at. Angela, could you speak to the history? 
So we, we always look at what other plans are currently available on the exchange, and we do that with all of our benefits. We work with a great partner at One Digital for uh, our benefits administration, and they do a lot of that legwork for us. We did look at MVP this year, and the cost to switch and make the transition was, um, and the amount of cost potentially saved was um, not, uh, going to be conducive for, for the current year. Um, we are looking at potentially changing dental in the future to do some sort of cost savings, but it wouldn't be a huge amount because the average amount we spend per employee that is benefits eligible is less than $1,000 for dental per year. Um, and then uh, another thing that I'm, I just don't actually know, um, and I'm going to try and phrase it <laughs> in a way that makes sense. Um, are all of the staff um, on our offered or provided um, benefits options? We do have some staff that use our opt-out option. Okay. Um, and that pays a $100 a week, but they do have to have other coverage. Um, and demonstrate that to us before they can opt out. Okay, so that gets it. The, uh, the opt out option is something I was getting at. So, okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, again, if you may have other questions that arise, please reach out to, to Elaine. Try to follow up on those. Thank you for a really thorough presentation. Um, we are going to move to IMC, the strategic vision area goal update for economic vitality. Yes, so economic vitality goal update. I'm gonna be really short this time. We're making pretty good progress on five of the eight strategies set by council in May for this fiscal year. Uh, I hope to have a more substantive update on the working community's challenge grant objectives of equity and workforce development um, that we would be developing with uh, other sectors in time for the next one. A note on the sidewalk permit, I'd, I'd said in the goal update that it was distributed today. Actually, that's not accurate. Uh, the plan was to distribute the revised permit process broadly to the business community today, but we're responding to some input from downtown Winooski board. Uh, so the broader distribution hasn't happened just quite yet. Any questions on the update? Um. This might be more for Paul. Definitely brought this up before, but wayfinding is on here and just thinking about the library, which I feel like is such a big need as well as a community resource that like the pool and the parking garage are very important to highlight, um, especially now that the Butternut Grove condos are in front of it. So I was just wondering if I, I see there's some pub note of possibly needing public input but i'm just wondering like where's the library in there as it seems to be kind of a consistent uh need and priority or hopefully it has been be consistently raised as a priority for our next phase okay sounds good thank you sure thing any questions or comment from members of the public on the economic vitality update Oh, and Paul, if you could drop the link to that uh, particular update in the chat, please, so um, folks on the call don't have to navigate to it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, let's move on to item D. This is on for discussion. Consider airport commissioner appointment. Okay, I'm just going to read this memo from me so council can just zoom out for a minute. Zone out for a minute. <laughs> uh, let's see, I gotta get there. So the Burlington Airport Commission is an advisory body accountable to the Burlington City Council. It has a responsibility to provide advice on all matters related to the operation of the airport, including financial matters. Uh, Winooski City Council may also delegate an additional may also delegate additional airport related duties to the to the commissioner. Uh, there's a typo in the memo. I just realized the commission meets once a month. Commissioner terms are three years. 
Um, Eric Vorwald, who has been uh, ably serving as Manuski's airport commissioner, discovered recently it's not eligible to be appointed because not, he is not a legally registered voter of Manuski. Thank you for pointing that out. The airport director confirmed his ineligibility. So the question to council today is whether you would like to air appoint an airport commissioner from council or advertise to the public and also if you would like to add any requirements beyond Burlington's position description, which were in your pocket, packet and on the Burlington website. Thanks, Elaine. So I'd ask first if anyone has interest in serving in this role. Interest, not ability at that time, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's... 3 p.m. meeting, is it? That's inaccurate. I feel like there's no date on this document, but it's, it's, not, a it's not accurate Hold for on. a couple different places. There is a meeting coming up. That follows the right... Okay, so there is a meeting this Wednesday at 4 p.m. So it's, it is Wednesdays at 4. It must be the first Wednesday. Does that sound right, Eric? It's been the third Wednesday, third Wednesday, but we have been, or the airport commission has been shifting the date to us uh, uh, to coincide with when the uh, Burlington Finance Commission meets. Okay. Where their the board of finance meets, uh, because most of their recommendations go to the board of finance and then the city council. So in order to make sure that that the airport commission has a chance to weigh in on any uh, proposals, this the meeting has sometimes been shifted to the first one. I had heard from the aviation director that there's a desire to make that permanent as well, but they haven't voted on it yet, I guess. Were that the case, would that change your mind? Unfortunately not. The time is still too early. Yeah. I didn't hear what the time, the new time that's shifting towards is. Could you repeat that? Um, well, so the next meeting is 4 p.m. Um, it, it, it has been the third Wednesday, but they've been shifting towards the first Wednesday. I heard from the aviation director a desire to actually officially move it to the first Wednesday. Um, Elaine, I did suggest to him that the 4 p.m. timing was difficult, be it for us or a member of the public, but I haven't heard any updates on the timing. I'd be willing to serve in this in like an interim role if we did want to advertise to the public but not miss out on representation on the board. Um, so that's something I would be willing to do in the, for, um, for a month or two. Thanks, Jim. Oh, Christine. Yeah. So Eric has actually volunteered to do that as well. So if, <laughs> if you also it's choose. Able. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that's. I can attend as a member of the public, not as a representative of the city. Oh. Right. So, right. Not actually serving an interim role, I misstated, but at least be able to update you in the meantime. But right, Winooski wouldn't officially have representation. It feels like if we, if Jim, if you are able to allocate some time um, in, as an interim, uh, it feels wise. We worked so hard to get a seat that we should take advantage of a voting seat. I feel similarly, um, and maybe Eric, if there's some potential to um, draw on your expertise, um, if you're still attending for the first meeting or two, that would be helpful too. It means you wouldn't be able to vote on any actions, um, so I could do that part, but I think we could represent the ski together. Does anyone have feelings about resident versus council representation? I will say South Burlington sends there a member of their council. And the Burlington representatives include council and residents. I mean, I think council's probably the preferred method. I just, personally, it needs to be five or later for mm -hmm. me. Um, I, I'd be happy to at that time. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I think it would have to be a resident. And then, uh, as an alternative, <laughs> We're gonna hate you for this. Um, it could be a shared role amongst counselors. It doesn't allow for consistency, but if we could split up the role and take, you know, six months, six months, or something of that variety, that might 
one, allow all of us to be informed of more well informed, more, more well engaged with those conversations and alleviate some of the full time burden. Um, I, I would say that <laughs> uh, if we can nail down what's happening with date, uh, with frequency and time, um, and if there's any degree to influence that to a later hour, that, that I think would be beneficial. I will say too, um, in discussions leading up to acquiring representation on the board, the desire to have council representation, at least initially, was mm. was shared. Um, okay, I would be happy to reach out to, unless it makes more sense for you too, Elaine, but one of us, to that body with a strong suggestion that a 5 p.m. start instead of 4 would make it easier for us to do that. And if that's not something they're willing to entertain, then we might switch to advertising to publicly. Especially if it's in person. But they offer Zoom too. Okay. It's hybrid. Okay, it's hybrid. Okay, yeah. that makes it easier. It doesn't, yeah, this, yeah, they also need to update there. <laughs> I think given the interest in having it council serve, then it's appropriate for the mayor to make that case. Okay, I will follow up on that then. I think we can, oh, any questions? Any questions from members of the public on this item? Okay, so I will follow up then, and then we'll see this again in the future agenda soon. And thank you, Eric, for volunteering, and Jim for interim. Okay, um, do we need a moment for, to, but do we need to come back on TV for the follow-up? I don't think it's necessary. The okay. minutes will reflect adjournment time. Okay, so, well, so first off. Oh, shoot. You're making a decision, though. Yeah. Could you stay? All right, thanks. Okay. Well, so so first, I'm looking for uh, so the next we have warned in the executive session pursuant to state statute VSA three one three two, looking for a motion to find that the negotiation of real estate purchase or lease options related to lot seven D in the public would put us at a disadvantage. So moved. Second. Motion by Bryn, second by Thomas. Elaine, I need to know who all to invite. Um, Angela, John, Bill Niquette, Doug Nettie. Debating or not on Eric. I guess not Eric. He doesn't look like he wants to. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, looking for a motion to enter into executive session. Uh, Mayor, sorry to interrupt, but we didn't actually vote on the last motion of the finding. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Motion by Brent, second by Thomas. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, thanks Jim. Uh, and looking for a motion to enter into executive session, inviting Elaine Wong, Angela Aldieri, John Rauscher, Bill Niquette, and Doug Nettie. So moved. Second. Motion by Thomas, second by Aurora. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are about to enter into executive session to discuss solely this topic. No other business is going to be discussed or actions taken. We may, um, we have warned a regular item for a potential discussion approval coming out of the executive session. That would be the only potential action taken before we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Uh, we are on regular item, number nine, regular item A. Um, announce an agreement if any is reached during executive session. I am seeking a motion to commit $11.4 million and commit to seek financing or alternative funding up to the $11.6 million number outlined in the December 5th financial proposal, contingent upon renegotiation of the settlement agreement, including removal of the right of alternative use from the South unit, and authorize Elaine Wong to execute said agreement as well as enter into an agreement with the ECHO Financing Agency. City manager, yes. Just in case. Authorize the city manager to execute said agreement as well as enter into a no, no, finance emergency. No, no. Second. Motion by Thomas, second by Bryn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. This brings us to the end of the agenda. Um, I'm seeking a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
Motion by Aurora, second by Jim. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone.